Hey, Tide here. So welcome to the VRTech channel. So there are a lot of things to talk about today because we have an interview with Mark Zuckerberg from Boss, the vice president of Facebook Reality Lab, where they talk about what they're working on for the future of our VR and AR platform. Then you feature Discover coming from the next Oculus Quest update. And finally, deep learning super sampling arriving to big games. So well, let's get into it. Just a little plug before we start, we're very close to 100K. I decided to do the crazy thing and to thank you all for the support. We're gonna then start when we get there to give away one Oculus Quest each month till the end of the year. So well, the sooner the better, but yeah, we're very, very close. So thank you all already. And uh, so remember to like, share and subscribe and uh, well, enjoy the video. Let's get into it. All right, so starting from a big thing, a conversation between Zuckerberg and the boss uh, about the future of the AR and VR platform for Facebook and Oculus, of course. Uh, it's around a 30 minutes interview. Of course, I'm gonna leave the link in the description below if you wanna check it out personally, but well, we're gonna go through the main stories of this thing. There are like six main stories. So let's get to the number one that is virtual workrooms. This is gonna be a new software to have meetings in VR that with the presence of spatial audio that makes the experience much, much better. And of course helps to create a better sense of presence. That is one of the most important things. I attended different meetings in the past in VR and I have to say, yes, the experience is much, much different than the sense of the involvement that doesn't really happen when you're not in VR, like in a Zoom call and something like it. So I'm really glad that they're working on something similar to what we have right now with spatial or well, other business applications applications out there. From what they're saying is something that is gonna arrive pretty soon and Boss is already using it weekly uh, for various meetings and stuff like that. So it's something that internally is already working and well, it's gonna arrive soon to everyone else. How soon? Well, we don't know because it really depends. Now the point number two, one of the most interesting is the neural interfaces because yes, they're working of course on using your brain to actually create an input in VR and AR. What they're talking about is more on the AR side right now because yeah, uh, having controllers and going around with AR headset is not really doable. Using your hands to interact can be weird when you're in public places. And of course, a voice recognition for some people they use it, they love to have an assistant for some people, it's just weird. And yeah, the privacy issue when you are asking a command by voice it is not always the best thing ever when you're talking about public spaces. That's why they consider a neural interface is kind of the holy grail of VR and AR. They were really stressing about the fact that they're not actually reading the brain, but just interpreting certain inputs. And that will open to so many possibilities. We saw already in one of my videos, brain neural interface in use, and they're absolutely fantastic. We know that Facebook bought CTRL Labs two years ago, they were working on a wrist to actually have different inputs. And uh, what it was saying is kind of crazy, the ability in this case to unlock a possibility to have like another pair of hands to, for example, just thinking about it, interact with the keyboard and write what you're thinking and being able with your hands to interact with other things. And that will be possible because our brain has uh, extra pathways that are redundant capacity uh, because of the fact if you have a brain injury and something that the brain just create another pathway to control your hand or something like it. And well, this can be used to actually have additional inputs on the inputs that we have regularly with our hands. And um, what we saw, for example, in the CTR lab demos is the fact that you will virtually move your hands even just thinking about it. And even if you weren't actually moving your hands in that moment, and that will unlock a lot of possibility for of course people with disabilities and also in the case that Zuckerberg was saying to have more inputs than usual and not having to move your hands around, but just thinking about it and have it done. And that's absolutely fantastic for something that they call a constellation of inputs. But let's get to the point number three. Another very interesting thing is that they're working on a new operating system. So the next operating system is not gonna be based on Android anymore, at least for augmented reality headsets, because of course Android needs a lot of power to just run in the background and then you have to put all the different applications from AR use, of course. And because we're talking about small glasses that they wanna create, something with which you're gonna be able to go pretty much everywhere in public, well, having an operating system that uses a lot of power, means that it's also gonna create a lot of heat. And for something that you need to have on your face all the time, well, of course, it's something that you have to combat. So uh, what you're working on is a micro kernel 
new operating system that's based on security, performance, and of course, efficiency to have the best possible of performance per watt. Of course, they're saying that this path is very challenging because creating an operating system from scratch is not easy, but it's something that is required to have a great AR or VR experience in the future. And that's maybe also the reason why we have a, such a delay in the arrival of uh, the first glasses and stuff you like it, probably because they want it on that software. They were rumored to be here for spring. Spring is past because now we're in June already. So yeah, maybe it's for that. It's harder than uh, imagined, so it's taking a bit longer. Who knows, but let's get to the next point. This was just a simple question for Mark, uh, what are his favorite games? And he said that at the beginning, he really loved Arizona Sunshine. He plays a lot of multiplayer games. Uh, of course, he talked about Beat Saber, maybe because it, now it's Facebook, so of course he needs to talk about it. Uh, but his favorite game so far is Onward. He's playing a lot of Onward, so maybe you played against him and you don't even know. He's playing a lot of multiplayer, so yeah. For what is worth, those are his favorite games. The number five was another question about advertisement in VR, and the boss responded it and stated it that it would actually be very helpful for a lot of developers. They're gonna be able to market their games a bit better and have the possibility to sell their games more uh, to the audience. Of course, they're creating a bigger market, market is expanding, so there's the need to find a way to have priority on some things instead of others, of course, and the ads are going to be in that way. So, so far, it seems like they're going to be more focusing toward like just game advertisement and hopefully it's going to stay that way because yeah, that's something needed, something that happens in all the console and stuff. So it's nothing new. Uh, it's a rhyming on the quest in that way as well for now. Number six was a very interesting question, how to lower the barrier to get in this new technology like AR and VR. Uh, Zuckerberg talked about it in two different ways. The first one was no wires. Things that has to be standalone, of course, to appeal to the mainstream market. There's always gonna be stuff with wires, but it's gonna be more a niche market with more powerful things and stuff like that. And then the mainstream market is gonna be no wires. It's gonna be hard to make, hard to manufacture, of course, but the response is going to be a bigger mainstream. And the second point, something that they talked about it already with the Oculus Quest 2 is lowering the cost. And how they are doing it? Well, they're pretty much taking the same approach that consoles are taking right now. So at the beginning, you just sell at cost or less than cost. So you lose some money with the hardware because you know that in the future, people are going to buy software with it and you're going to get gain profit by it. It's something that PlayStation 5 is doing, something that Xbox is doing. Every Xbox in the past, every PlayStation in the past was sold pretty much under cost and the same thing are going to use for the VR market. So it's very interesting indeed because of course we're getting great hardware for less price, but yeah, they're going to make profit on the things and something. So there you have it. But now let's talk about some updates that are going to arrive very soon on the Oculus Quest 2. Well, Basti, uh, we already talked about him in the past, uh, found a way to find the new features that are going to arrive in the next update and something that you can already see. I'm going to leave the link in the description below. So if you can, if you want to upload the APK, you're going to be able to see them in person. But here we have a new colorblind option that is absolutely fantastic for people that are colorblind so they can actually manipulate the colors and have the best output possible for them. Then finally, we have some software and examples for the intrusion detection system. So that means that if someone is getting your guardian, you're gonna be able to see it and know there's something is there, like a toy, like a person, a pattern, you're not gonna kick it and stuff. So that's very, very good. New infinite office settings with a keyboard. So you're gonna be able to just see a square where you can put your keyboard and use it. So you don't really need a Logitech one that got direct support, but you're gonna be able to just have uh, these pass-through window and be able to use it in real life. Now, the resolution of the cameras is not high enough to actually see all the keys, but seeing something is better than nothing, of course. But now let's get to the latest part, that is DLSS, arriving finally to VR in big games. Well, we have No Man's Sky that finally added the support for deep learning super sampling. What does it mean? Well, you're gonna be able to have a better frame rate preserving pretty much uh, the same image quality because the image is gonna be super sampled through AI, and yeah, it works pretty well indeed for flat games. Now, uh, there's around a 20 or 30% increase on frame rate when you use it. There are different options in uh, No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky has always been a very demanding game, and very hard to run, even on a 2080 Ti like I have. With this, it runs much better, but what I noticed there, there's still some stuttering. Probably that is not about the SS because it was there already before, but that 
everything didn't solve it yet. Uh, overall, there's a better frame rate, so everything is more fluid and everything, so it's more enjoyable. You're gonna be able to finally probably enjoy the game, but yeah, still stuttering problems, probably something that Hello Games has to fix itself because yeah, it's still not perfect, much better than before. And hopefully this new DLSS arrive for more games in the future because it really helps in the 20, 30% of increase in frame rate. It is really vital when it comes to VR and you have to go from 60 FPS that is not playable to 90 FPS. So yeah, uh, good job there Nvidia, good job there Halo Games. Hopefully you're gonna be able to fix the stuttering soon. But anyway guys, there was all a lot of stuff happening. Uh, what is your favorite thing? Are you excited about this new operating system? Are you excited about AR? Are you scared about it? brand new marine interface arriving from Facebook directly? <laughs> Let me know in the comment below. And as always, if you liked the video, like, if you didn't like the video, just like, subscribe to the channel for more of VR tech. And if you really love the channel, the join button down there. Little and further, also the Patreon with prior access to videos. And at the same time, we have t-shirt, sticker, mask, 2021 item. And that's all on the Patreon. Thanks, of course, to all the Patreons that support the channel. And uh, yeah, if you're not joining, it's the description below. Uh, again, like, dislike, subscribe. See you guys next video. Thanks for watching. Ciao.